Alors bonjour, Donc, euh, nous allons écouter la présentation de Madame Sondes Abderazek pour euh, l'obtention d'une thèse de doctorat de l'Université d'Avignon. Euh, le document de thèse est intitulé « Évaluation de l'intelligibilité de la parole par apprentissage profond vers plus d'interprétabilité en phonétique clinique » et je la laisserai introduire le texte en anglais lors de sa présentation. Donc nous vous écoutons, vous avez 45 minutes, c'est ça et ensuite, nous ouvrirons la séance de questions. Merci. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I will present my thesis work in, entitled Evaluation of Speech Intelligibility with Deep Learning Towards Enhanced Interpretability in Clinical Phonetics. So, this presentation is structured as follows. First, we have an introduction. Then, I will cite some related works the thesis objective and data sets used, and uh, the, uh, the methodology that we propose. And finally, I will end with the conclusion and perspectives of this work. Let me first start with an introduction. So we are working in the context of speech disorders which affect the ability of a person to form correct sounds. <coughs> uh, it can be due to neurological diseases, head and neck cancer, or other reasons. Assessing speech disorders is crucial measure is a crucial measure to monitor the progress of a pathology, to evaluate the effectiveness of speech therapy, and to understand the effects of a particular treatment. In clinical practice, perceptual measures are the most commonly used method to assess speech disorders. It's, uh, it involves a speech pathologist which accord different scores to assess the speech quality of the patient. In this presentation, we will focus mainly on two perceptual measures, which are intelligibility, defined as the degree to which the message of a speaker can be decoded by the listener, and severity, which is defined as the degree of the overall alteration of speech signal. Now, uh, perceptual measures have some limitation and their reliability is affected by some factors such as the experience of the expert, uh, his or her familiarity with the patient, with the task, with the linguistic material, etc. So all of these reflect a subjectivity of perceptual measures. Not only this, but also they are time consuming and non-reproducible. To better address the subjectivity of these per perceptual measures, Rigby project came as an automatic assistant to uh, standing for looking for relevant linguistic units to improve the intelligibility measurement of speech production disorder. It's an ANR project and with a multidisciplinarity uh, aspect involving experts from computer science, <coughs> from linguistics and clinical phonetics. And its purpose is to develop an objective evaluation tool for speech intelligibility in the context of speech disorders due to head and neck cancer. Uh, the other purpose of uh, rugby is to uh, explore the contribution of deep learning uh, to address this uh, goal. So our focus within rugby project as ELIA are acoustic units, deep learning and interpretability. Now, before moving to the related works, I find essential to briefly introduce two uh, important concepts, which are uh, explainability and interpretability of deep learning. I have uh, dedicated a whole chapter in my report to uh, define these two key concepts. And here I will briefly uh, introduce the need of interpretability and explainability. So in our case, it's mandatory because we are uh, involved in a clinical context where the stakes are high. And if we focus on the main difference between these two terms, we find a significant confusion in the literature. Uh, many studies use them interchangeably. But in our case, uh, we, found, uh, we find essential to fix a definition for each one. So we chose the definition of Montavon uh, for interpretability as the mapping of an abstract concept into a domain that a human can make sense of. And we, uh, we uh, adopt the definition of Gilpan uh, 
the explanation of deep network representations aim to understand the role and structure of the data flowing through these bottlenecks. Okay, let me uh, move on to the works that have the same goal as Rigby, uh, Rigby, which is objective assessment of pathological speech and focusing on deep learning uh, <coughs> tools. So basically, uh, we can find many works which use deep learning, uh, have a, a, a deep learning model and see this model as a black box, re receiving speech signal as input and uh, giving a score assessing the severity or the intelligibility of the speech signal. The problem with these uh, works is that they do not do interpretation of the final assessment uh, score with regard to local alt alterations in the speech signal, but also they do not do the deep learning explainability and interpretation. Now, let's consider the works having always the same purpose, but this time uh, focusing on deep learning and, uh, interpret and interpretability. We can find, uh, may, uh, to, uh, to, uh, just to mention, these works are very few in the literature. Uh, we, uh, we can find this work of 2AL, which uh, proposed a solution to predict the severity of disorderly speech while incorporating an interpretable layer which labels are uh, perceptual labels given by speech and language pathologists. An extension of this work was recently proposed by Suyal, uh, in which uh, the main difference is the labels of uh, the bottleneck layer, which are changed uh, into acoustic features extracted from the speech samples. Now, the good point of these two works is that they interpret the final score uh, with uh, the bottleneck, uh, with the clinically interpretable labels. But uh, the problem of the first work is that it uses extra labels to train the interpretable layer, which can introduce a subjectivity while interpreting the final score. But also both works use, uh, train their model from scratch on a pathological uh, speech, which is not, uh, always available. Now, more generally and not really related to uh, the speech disorders assessment, it's worth mentioning uh, that in, rec in recent years, many works are uh, dedicated to the deep learning explainability and interpretability. We can find this in uh, either the computer vision uh, domain with more works, or recently, in recent years, we can also see uh, many works within the speech uh, domain. So basically, the authors, regardless of the field, uh, they are able to, uh, to find meaningful concepts in the deep learning models that uh, emerge uh, based on, uh, based on the, uh, the final task. Okay, now I will introduce the thesis, uh, my thesis objective. So the central research question of this thesis is, is it possible to develop an objective assessment tool for speech disorders while firstly incorporating uh, the advantages of deep learning tools, but also addressing the limitations of current assessment tools? Now, the considerations we took into account are the interpretability and explainability of the deep learning solution, the interpretability of the final assessment score with regard to local alterations. We want to meet the high data requirement of deep learning, but also address the limited data availability in speech pathology. To get started, let's look at the two data sets we are using in this study. The first type of data is, uh, is consisting of disordered speech due to head and neck cancer. We have basically CWSC corpus, uh, which includes 40 healthy control speakers and 87 uh, head and neck cancer patients. And within the Rigby project, we can, in terms of recorded tasks, we can find reading passage, picture description, prosodic tasks, and so many others. And regarding the perceptual measures, we can find intelligibility, severity, phonemic alteration, etc. 
In this presentation, our focus will be the reading task, which is almost one hour, uh, where a patient reads a clinical text, La Chèvre de Monsieur Seguin. And in terms of perceptual measures, we focus on the severity and intelligibility measures, which are assessed in a 0 to 10 scale, where uh, 10 reflects a perfectly intelligible speech or absence uh, of alteration. Okay, we have uh, at our disposal the reading task and severity intelligibility measures in the second corpus, which is ECONCO corpus, including 25 patients, uh, always with head and neck cancer. And it's worth mentioning here uh, that all the patients underwent a cancer treatment. Now, for healthy speech, uh, we use brief corpus, which includes almost 100 hours of uh, French read speech from uh, 120 speakers. After all this preparation, let me introduce you the methodology that we propose. So, to give you an overview of the global image, we have a patient and we want to give him a final score assessing uh, his or her speech intelligibility. So we propose a methodology for an interpretable assessment of speech intelligibility, which is consisting of three steps. Let's start with uh, the first step. <laughs> so basically, in this step, we implement a CNN for, French phoneme, for the task of French phoneme classification that we train on healthy uh, speech from brief corpus. And we have the speech signal with the phoneme alignment. So we do data pre-processing on the speech signal, and we uh, expect the model to uh, give us uh, the phoneme label uh, corresponding to the input. It's worth mentioning here that the classification is done at the frame level. So for each frame, we, uh, we have uh, a final phoneme label. Uh, the architecture of the CNN is actually simple, consisting of two convolutional pooling layers and uh, followed by three fully connected layers. To uh, report the results of this first step, we evaluate the performance of the phoneme classifier on healthy speech. So basically, we test the CNN on a brief corpus uh, dedicated to the test, and it gave 81.4%. And we tested in Seduacil leg only for healthy control speakers, and it gave 72.2%. Sorry, I, uh, I, I forgot to mention that the, perf uh, the performance metric is the balanced accuracy that we use here. So we can say that even if we have a drop in the accuracy, the model is able to generalize well. It is not uh, subject to overfitting since the USC leg is recorded in other, uh, in other conditions and protocols. Um, Okay, we use confusion matrices uh, that we do not present here uh, for sake of time, but they reveal that the classification errors of the CNN are uh, explainable and make sense. And later on, we expose the model on uh, different levels of uh, speech degradation with the aim of demonstrating that the model reflects this, uh, this degradation. So since we have a model that is able to generalize well, we assume that a significant degradation in the model performance is, is consistent with the speech quality degradation. And to, uh, to uh, examine this assumption, we evaluate the model uh, on each healthy control speaker and patient from CWSCLA corpus. And we analyze the correlation between uh, their uh, balanced accuracies and their perceptual measures. So these are the results of this analysis, where we show a scatter plot. Each point, uh, each, each green point is a patient, and each blue point is a healthy control speaker. In the y-axis, uh, we have uh, the perceptual measures from the uh, corpus. 
intelligibility severity. And in the x-axis, we have the balance and accuracy, which is uh, how the model performed in each of the recordings of these speakers. So we can see that a strong correlation exists between either the intelligibility uh, perceptual measure or the severity one. And also we can see that the model uh, correlates well with the severity perceptual measures. And we are able to say that even though the model was exclusively trained on healthy speech, it is able to reflect the degree of speech alteration. Now, to conclude this first step, we performed a phoneme classification task, which will give us insightful information at the phoneme level about the final intelligibility score in later steps. We trained on healthy speech, which uh, meet the high data requirement of deep learning, considering the simple task of phoneme classification. We address the issue of limited data availability in speech pathology, and we gain insights into normal speech patterns, uh, which is valuable for later consideration of speech disorders. <clears throat> so now we, what we have is a CNN trained on healthy speech from, for French phoneme classification, giving a representation of the input at the phoneme uh, level and we have the deep representation of phonemes within uh, the, deep, uh, the, the deep hidden uh, representation of the CNN. And this leads me to the next step, which is uh, exploration. We carry this step with the following research, uh, research questions. The first one is, can we find a concept that is relevant in the clinical phonetics context that is captured in the CNN uh, deep representations? How can we retrieve information related to speech pathology based on those meaningful representations? And does the interpretation of this information bring out a fine-grained analysis of the speech quality? We will start with the first research question for which we developed, uh, uh, we developed a framework dedicated for the explainability, which we call a neuro-based concept detector. Let me first introduce a very important stage before, uh, before detailing the NCD framework. So uh, basically, uh, we need a data set that is representative of uh, of healthy speech, which for sure uh, do not, uh, that, that does not have to be seen in the uh, CNN training and validation, and for which we uh, use some selection, for which frames <coughs> we use some selection criteria such as uh, the related, uh, the frames have to be related to a complete phoneme production, selected from different speakers and contexts, with equal distribution of frames over the different phonemes. OK, based on this representative data set, we can now build a representation vectors of neurons belonging to the fully connected layers of the CNN. So we fed the samples of breath in uh, into the CNN trained on healthy speech for the task of French phoneme classification. and uh, for each, for a given neuron N, this vector characterizes the activation of the neuron N to each of the French phonemes uh, represented in a uh, brief int corpus. Then a vector is generated for each neuron in a fully connected layer. And subsequently, the set of representation vectors are uh, projected in a two-dimensional space using TSNE, uh, using TSNE, and a visualization of this projection, projection uh, for each of the fully connected layers reveal uh, that there is some, um, that neurons are organized in clusters. So uh, we, can, uh, we can wonder what type of information do these neurons encode. And this is what we are going to answer in the next steps. 
At this stage, we fix a concept that we want to know if it is or not encoded by the neurons. So uh, we adopt uh, the concept of phonetic feature, uh, features, which, is an abs uh, which are abstract representations of the acoustic and articulatory characteristics of phonemes. And it is a concept of great relevance in clinical practice since it reflects the physiological characteristics of the impaired speech. So to define uh, these uh, phonetic features, we worked with the great collaboration with LPL, uh, where, uh, where we, we, we were able to define uh, these uh, phonetic features. And here I, give you, uh, I will give you uh, an example uh, to, um, to explain this concept. So, for example, for the phonetic feature back, it reflects the position of the tongue in, in the mouth. And to note the presence, the, the phoneme, uh, the set of phonemes presenting, uh, which are back, uh, we, uh, we have one in their cells. So we noted plus back. And to, uh, to refer to the set of phonemes which do not present the back phonetic feature, we uh, refer uh, to these set of phonemes as minus back. So for an empty cell, like the case of A here, uh, 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 it means that the back feature does not, uh, uh, does not, uh, that uh, A phoneme is not uh, reflected by the presence or the absence of the back feature. Now moving to the next stage, we want to quantify the alignment of uh, the neurons uh, with the chosen concept of phonetic feature uh, of, of phonetic features, and to do so, we define a score for each cathol neuron phonetic feature. This score reflects the contrast between the neuron activations for the phonemes that present the phonetic feature and uh, the activation level of phonemes which do not present the phonetic feature. This score vary uh, in range from minus one to one, where for a given threshold that we fix after uh, experiences, we uh, consider that the neuron N is identified either as a strong detector for the presence of the phonetic feature or for the absence of the phonetic feature, or it is not considered as a detector for phonetic feature concept. Uh, it's time to show the results of the NCT framework application on the fully connected layers uh, of the CNN. So uh, here we take, we take the same plots, uh, the same TSNE plots, where we have neurons in a 2D space and we cover each neuron with the phonetic feature it detects. So uh, the first thing I want to mention is that uh, we, we, the first fully connected layer is absent since with the threshold that we fixed with experiences, uh, its neurons are not considered as detectors for the concept of phonetic feature. And we can also see the presence of dense neuron clusters automatically identified as encoding the same phonetic feature. This, uh, this number of phonetic feature is increasing while going deeper in layers, which can uh, mean that the phonetic feature concept uh, encourages the discrimination among the, phoneme, the final phoneme classification. To summarize this, we answered the first research question of can we find the concept that is relevant in clinical phonetics uh, encoded in the CNN? So the answer is yes. We found uh, phonetic features that emerge in the CNN deep representations, which is very uh, important in clinical practice. And we answered this question with our first main contribution, NCD framework, which, which was published in ICAST 2022 uh, International Conference. Uh, that completes my overview of the proposed methodology where 
based on the CNN deep representations of phonemes and via NCD, we have identified phonetic feature detectors. And at this stage, we want to answer uh, the second and third research questions, which are how can we retrieve information related to speech pathology based on the explainability outcome? And that's the interpretation of this information, bring out uh, a fine-grained analysis of the speech quality. <clears throat> so to answer these research questions, we uh, propose a scoring approach, which is uh, artificial norm-based phonological similarity dedicated to the interpretability. In this section, we set up a scoring approach uh, through which we assess how well the articulatory and acoustic characteristics related to a phonetic feature are produced by a speaker. So this score is defined for a couple uh, phonetic feature speaker. And based on the detectors of this phonetic feature in question, we examine the activation, uh, the response of these uh, phonetic feature detectors to uh, the phonemes that present the phonetic feature in question. And we compare it to uh, the healthy speech, which, uh, which is our breath in uh, reference corpus. With this score, we have, uh, with this formula, we have a score that uh, vary between uh, 0 to 1, uh, where uh, 1 uh, reflects typical uh, characteristics, uh, typical acoustic and articulatory characteristics, uh, where, uh, sorry, uh, high values reflect that uh, the fact that the patient uh, is well producing uh, the phonetic feature in question and low values reflect the fact that the production of the phonetic feature in question from, by the speaker does not exhibit typical acoustic and articulatory characteristics. We do the same thing for all the phonetic features for one patient. And at this stage, we want, uh, we want to explore the capacity of this score to retrieve characteristics related uh, to the speech impairment. So uh, we chose to uh, visualize it under the form of a heat map, where in columns, we, uh, in rows, uh, we have uh, the phonetic features. And in columns, we have uh, the patients in question. And uh, every cell is the IMPS, scoring, uh, the IMPS score for the couple patient phonetic feature uh, after uh, converting it in a color scale. So we plot all the patients. And uh, now uh, these are the patients of the C leg corpus. Uh, not only the patients, but also the healthy control speakers. We can clearly mention that uh, cells with high opacity are concentrated in uh, the left part. And this because we sorted on uh, the severity level, all the patients. And we, uh, we can also highlight the fact that the, NPS, uh, the INPS scores uh, for both phonetic features high and back reflect the severity level of c speakers. And since these phonetic features uh, uh, reflect the role of the tongue in articulation, uh, we can say that the INPS scores are able to reflect the strong relationship between impaired speech uh, due to head and neck cancer and the tongue movements. These results are uh, consistent with another study in Rigby project based on perceptual phonetic analysis on C2C speakers. Uh, this work was done also uh, with collaboration uh, with LPA. So uh, to, uh, to validate these results, we also conducted a correlation al analysis uh, of, the different uh, of the different perceptual measures 
with the different IMPS scores of phonetic features, and the same trends are observed uh, with this correlation analysis. Uh, so many other analyses were also conducted for uh, different speech disorders, including dysarthria and uh, voice disorder, and we were able uh, to show that the, uh, the INPS score reflects alterations in phonetic features in relation to some characteristics of these dysarthria types, uh, but uh, not the case of voice disorders. This work was published in Interspeech 2022. And with this interpretability phase, we were able uh, to, uh, to answer uh, the second research question by our second main contribution, which is INPS scoring approach. And we were able to retrieve fine-grained interpretations of the speech impairment. So to summarize this second step, we did explainability, which bring to light an interpretable dimension of great relevance in the clinical phonetics, which is the phonetic features. And with the interpretability, we provi provided a fine-grained interpretation of the speech impairment based on the emergent dimension of phonetic features. And we ensured an additional level of granularity that clinicians can use to link and interpret the final intelligibility assessment. And the whole, the whole work of the second step was published in a journal uh, uh, IEEE. Uh, so to complete uh, the, with another piece of puzzle, we have developed an IMPS scoring approach that gave us interpretations based on the phonetic features. And now for the final assessment step, we want to answer uh, the research question, can we predict a global score assessing the speech production of patients based on the outcome of the two previous steps? And how to link this final assessment to the outcome uh, of the interpretable dimensions, so how the whole uh, methodology can be used in a clinical context? Uh, I will start with answering the first uh, research question. So uh, basically, we have a patient. We retrieve the feature, uh, features, uh, feature parameters from uh, the speech signal of these patients that we fed into the CNN-based phoneme classifier. It gave uh, us uh, logit vectors or uh, output at the phoneme dimension that we fed into a shallow neural network for final score prediction and we have a final uh, score assessing the speech of this patient for one second. So for each one second, we have a score that we average uh, in final to have a final score uh, for one patient. Now, the first method was uh, based on uh, the output of the phoneme classifier. In this method, we just, uh, we just modified uh, modify these phoneme representations uh, by considering the set of interpretable neurons detecting phonetic features across layers. And we do the same, uh, I mean, the rest does not change. So we have a final score based on these phonetic features embeddings. Now, the shallow neural network for the final score predictions. Uh, what is consisting of an average polling with a fully connected layer uh, with an output that we implement, uh, implement uh, for an intelligibility prediction task and a severity prediction task. So basically, this uh, neural network is trained on uh, different prosodic tasks from CDSC corpus, validated on CDSC leg corpus, and tested on the third SPICOM cohort. Now, uh, for uh, the results of the reg regression of this final score, uh, we use uh, as evaluation metrics MSC and MA, uh, MAE. And overall, both models uh, either tend on logic vectors or on phonetic feature embeddings uh, perform reasonably well. 
And the MAE, the best one, is uh, on the intelligibility prediction task uh, for uh, this, uh, validate, when validating on the dual select corpus. So uh, basically, you can say that this error given by the model is less than uh, the difference that can be observed between the perceptual assessment of experts. So since the, this model gave the best uh, score, uh, the one uh, trained on quality feature embeddings, we will focus on it to, uh, to report the results of uh, a correlation analysis that was done between the perceptual measures of either severity or intelligibility correlated with uh, the mean predicted scores given by uh, the SNM. Now, these scatter plots are uh, on uh, CWC speakers. We can uh, see that a positive strong relationship exists between the predicted and perceptual uh, severity measures or intelligibility. So we can say that the model is able to capture some of the underlying patterns in the phonetic feature embeddings. We can also see that there is an underestimation of high severity scores uh, for, uh, for the model, which is trained on severity task, and an overestimation of the low severity scores, while for uh, the model trained on the task of intelligibility prediction, we have an overestimation of low intelligibility scores. So now this analysis was conducted on the dual select speakers, which is the same validation set, and to discard any possibility of misleading conclusions from the previous analysis, we do the same thing on Spiconco speakers, and it gives exactly the same uh, trends. So with this, we answered the uh, first research question in this step, uh, and uh, the answer is yes, we, we, we were able to predict a global sp uh, score, and there is promising results on head and neck cancer patients. So we, uh, we complete uh, this our global overview with the third step. And now we want to answer the second step, uh, the second research question, which is how to link the final assessment uh, to the outcome of the interpretable dimensions and how the overall uh, proposed methodology can be used in a clinical context. So uh, here uh, we illustrate an end-to-end -end application of the proposed methodology where we have a patient uh, so the, this patient is supposed to say, uh, Monsieur Seguin n'avait jamais vu du bonheur avec ses chèvres. Uh, let's hear what she is saying. Does not work in heart. Monsieur Sebain n'a jamais vu de bonheur avec une chèvre. Ok. Ok. The proposed methodology gave a score of. Um, of 5.52 uh, uh, on the intelligibility scale. We have also the metadata of these, uh, this patient, which, uh, who has an oral cavity uh, tumor location with, in the tongue with the greatest uh, size of tumor, which is T4. And uh, she was subject to a subtotal pelvilosectomy. So basically, it's uh, it's uh, taking apart from the tongue. And with the proposed methodology, we are able to give uh, in interpretations at the phoneme level with the confusion matrices. So here we can, uh, it's not very clear, but we can see that uh, the B phoneme 
is, uh, is uh, absorbing the D and G. And we are able to uh, give interpretations at the phonetic feature level uh, with uh, the heat map. So uh, here we can have uh, we can see that she has a problem with the compact and acute phonetic features, uh, which is normal because she has a tumor in the tongue. So we can finish this overview by uh, adding the possibility to interpret the final intelligibility assessment with regard to phonetic features and phonics. Uh, to summarize this part, we were based on the different levels of representations provi provided by the two previous steps. We have promising, uh, promising results uh, obtained regarding the prediction of the final score of head and neck cancer patients. And a relationship between, we, we could find a relationship between the predicted score and the degree of speech alteration at the phoneme and phonetic feature levels. To conclude this presentation, we propose a three-step methodology based on deep learning and dedicated to interpretable assessment of speech intelligibility in the context of speech disorders. We address the lack of interpretation of the final assessment score with regard to local alterations by, by providing insightful information uh, about the final assessment score at both the phoneme and phonetic feature levels. We propose an interpretable solution based on deep learning, and this uh, <coughs> enables to mitigate the impact of the black box of deep learning models while alleviating the mistrust of experts in a clinical context. Uh, we uh, this work have, uh, has uh, several perspectives. Uh, for uh, for the perspectives regarding the clinical uh, purposes, we can imagine uh, this work in a longitudinal study, where uh, the clinician want to track the changes in speech production over time. So uh, the pro uh, the proposed methodology has to be confirmed and its effectiveness. And if it is confirmed, it can inform better uh, treatment approach. We can imagine this work in other non-clinical applications, that, such as a second language uh, learning. So interpretations given by the model can identify the phonetic features that have to be improved for a given speaker that wants to ameliorate its second language. We can uh, imagine it in a regional accent identification. So we can use the interpretations to identify regional accent characteristics, which can be uh, relevant in some applications. And we can uh, imagine it in, uh, since the NCD framework that we propose is general, we can imagine it in other different uh, architectures, tasks, and concepts, and, and detecting other concepts. Uh, so these are the reference and uh, thank you for your attention.